Hey, thanks for checking in on Bathtub Sir and welcome back to Pyre. Last episode we took on another riot which had us beating a team of ladies with wings. They were quite fierce, I've got to be honest. Um, we had to employ a block tactic which I couldn't get my head around. But anyway, we won and we got a new addition to our team, Panatha, who is also a lady with wings and I've got to admit I don't quite trust her. There's something just a little off about her. But anyway, let's continue our journey and see where to next. I've got a mistake unicorn with breasts. That's quite a cool, um, I don't know, what remains to, to do our rights in front of. So we need to head to the sulfur main. A precarious path leading towards the woods. The low minstrel cautions that one path down the cliffs is rather treacherous. But it's the only way we can go, I believe. So let's do it. Be careful though. Uh oh. The wagon has hit a snag, descending the black crags. Its wheel is stuck. Joe's reel is not pleased. I mean, is she ever? First, that blasted little bird. Now this. Though you lack Joe the reel's raw strength, you join in as she attempts to dislodge the wagon. At last, with a roar and a heave, she forces the wagon back onto solid ground. Oh, that didn't take too long then, did it? Made a sounder would be worth all of the hassle. Thank you, Jody. I'm guessing Sounderwood doesn't like to be kept waiting. He is very patient, on the contrary. Not I. Let's move on. Soon, the wagon is prepared to press onward, down the jagged slopes towards Waking Wood. Your companions who explored ahead advise on which of the forked paths is best. Now, whose advice do we take this time? We can either go for the Glass Peak, um, and Pamitha says she can procure a talisman here. Right, but it's riddled with black crags, so we can go to Flamberg. Lands on a northern pl uh, plateau over Waking Wood, pocked with seething fissures. Sir Gilman claims that he can dig up something valuable here. So what do we want? Do we want a talisman or something valuable? Something that we just sell. I think we'll go for, for a talisman so we can equip it. Please don't let us down, Pemifer. Whoa, where the hell? How did we do that? Oh well. Having gone the route Pemifer recommended, she directs you towards a particular crag no more conspicuous than any other. They clip our wings before they cast us down, you know. But, just the same, we learn to flit around a bit. Just watch. Pamitha swoops up to a nearby peak and disappears behind it. She does not keep you waiting long and returns bearing an item of some sort. For you, reader darling, we high wing remnants stash away such things for such occasions. And Pamitha found the star splinter, it should come in useful. Cool, and it's a rank 10 talisman, but it's only worth 13 gold anyway. When repairing to fling the orb, the bearer's charge up speed increases 40%. A fleck of shaped rock falling from the heavens, its very shape tempts you to give it a good toss. <laughs> um, well, we don't really fling the orb much, but maybe we should get into the habit now we have the Star Splinter. I don't know who to give it to. Maybe Sir Gilman? Who knows? And we've made it to the woods. Oh my god, imagine if we actually meet Sounder with this episode. I'd be very interested. Having passed beyond the Black Crags, your wagon arrives at the edge of Waking Wood. It is here that Sounderwood is, is to be expecting you. However, most puzzling, he will have met us here. You said he would find us himself. Yeah. Aye, he was to find us at the edge of these woods. Are we supposed to keep waiting for him? He would desire for the stars to be your guide, as always. The rights beckon, and the rights take precedence above all else. Surely he shall find us yet. Then, let's keep moving. How do we get through these woods? Oh, well, what an empty climax. I was so looking forward to meeting the Sandalwood sack. And instead, he's a no-show. We've been stood up on our first date with Sandalwood. Oh, regardless, the low minstrel notes two possible paths forward from this point. Low cautions that the woods are difficult to navigate, and Sounder would, would have known the most uh, expedient, expedient path. I know that word, I just can't bloody say it. I guess it means the most optimal path. So we go through Needlefield, which just sounds horrible. A small clearing east of the Glade of Lou. And he says his client would Sounder would study the rights here. Look at all this. Wow, look. Travel to an adjacent location to reveal it, so it looks like we're going to be doing two sets of travelling, I reckon. Or Greymoor. Contains the grandest trees in all of Wakingwood. The low minstrel says his client Sandalwood once resided here. Um, I think Greymoor sounds pretty cool. Better than Needlefield, at least, in my humble opinion, so let's go with that. Cool, we made it. Sandalwood has led a long life, compared with any of you, at least. In the latest years of his exile, he became rather reclusive for, for a variety of reasons he shall no doubt explain. He found some solace here, in these woods, 
though I fear I cannot locate his residence without him. Unfortunately, you find no trace of Sandalwood, and without him there to guide you, you remain quite lost. Oh crap, maybe we should have gone to the to the Needlewood, and we could have found, I don't know, leftovers from his studies, maybe a handy tip. The woods seem to have encroached. There is no path forward, while neither of the paths leading backward appear to match the route you took to this point. Bollocks. And head to the under thicket. The imp Tizzo seems to wish to go towards this location. Now why would you want to go to the under thicket? We go to the burnt grove. Faye seems drawn to this location for some reason. You know what? I completely forgot about Faye. <laughs> let's um let's decide with her and go to the burnt grove. God, I don't know if we're making the, the optimal choices here. Seems like we're back where we started. <laughs> the woods are so disorientating at this point that you decide to break for camp and survey the surroundings for any clues. Perhaps later there should be time to pursue your vocations. Right, let's sift through the ashes. Ah, the Beyond the Crystal seeks Jodoril. Brilliant, we can do a scribe trial at last. Okay, let's do it. Sandra, how are you? What brings you to me this time, my dear reader? Jodoril, that's who. It is the least I can do in exchange for your company. You need to put point me to the one you have in mind. Let's do it. And what one have you got? Ah, you've got the quickness one, okay. Because you are quite slow, aren't you? You asked Sandra to administer one of her special trials for Jodoril. That surly demon, is it? She could stand to lighten up, though I fear that is not a secret I can teach. But let us bring her forth, regardless. Soon, Joe the Real appears in the heat of the summons. What is the meaning of this, Rita? Oh, she's not happy. Hopefully, the talisman will win. Will um, will be like worth it, I guess, and we can swap out the quickness one to someone else. Right. So we've only done one of these before. So this could be a bit ropey. What is the meaning of this, Rita? Where are the others? The apparition Sandra appears and loosens her mask. Welcome to my humble home, demon. You are good at taking orders, no? State your purpose quickly, Rafe. My purpose is to put you to the test. You may be fearsome to behold, but you are old and slow. Your weakness your weaknesses perhaps outweigh your strengths. Though, I sorely wish to see you and your lovely reader prove me wrong. Old, she says. Huh. Very well then, reader. Let us show her whether she is right. God, she's a brave woman to call Jodriel old. Oh crap. Oh crap. Yes, two at a time. Jump it. Jump again. We made it. It is quite hard. <laughs> um, I almost think we should have got clips there. Just before we scored. Right, come to me. Yes. No, she got me. I knew she would. Oh, look at that time. <laughs> So we've got to remember, once we attack, we don't have an aura. That really should have sunk in by now. Okay, can we do that? Oh, we got two again. Double jump, double jump. Brilliant. The other one hasn't even respawned, so we only need to score once more. Let's keep doing it how we're doing it. You want some? Okay. Nice. Uh-oh. They're closing in on me. Get out of here. That's it. Go. Oh crap, we're stuck. Uh oh. Uh oh. Can we jump? Oh crap, I knew we'd drop it then. Oh! Can we respawn in time? Yes. Get rid of her. Nice. Right, we've got a clean run. We jump over that. Oh, I've jumped straight into him. Oh, nice! Brilliant! We landed and pushed the uh, the enemy away. I forgot Joe Real could do that. She's got way more depth than I think I take advantage of. So Joe Real, well, we did it first time. To be honest, that's pretty good. Are you satisfied now, Rafe? I am never satisfied, Demon. However, your performance was sufficient, and you passed my test. Thus, congratulations are in order to you and to your lovely reader. Now, farewell. All right, give me the prize. What do we got? Sandra's Disciple, nice. Okay, also the downside is beneath the Commonwealth, at the base of an immense waterfall. Will we have to sail up that to get back to the Commonwealth, I wonder? That was a strange experience. Hmm, what do you have there, reader? 
you received Solium's Horn for completing Jodoril's trial. trial. It's a rank 5 legendary talisman. So once Jodoril casts her aura farther and faster than usual. Not bad, I guess. Only usable by Jodoril, Sandra's second blade managed to graze her target's face, twisted as it was, with sorrow, not with rage. Cool. We'll equip that right away. Okay, so, let me get rid of that for you. Now, who needs some quickness? Faye's got nothing, you've got nothing, so Gilman. Um, you know what, let's give you the quickness. Get you super quick. And Faye, you can have the flinging one. And I guess Pamitha will have nothing. I'm sure she'll be fine with that. Right, let's carry on. What now? Sift through the ashes. I don't know what that entails. Like, what are we looking for? Perhaps the ashen covered ground here holds some clue about what happened to the informant. Alright, that makes sense. Maybe some trail. He was here! He, he was here! You mean Sandalwood? If I may ask, how can you be so certain? I think from this. I think from this. It says something. I, I don't know what it says, but I feel like it has to mean something. Faye produces a small strip of bark she found in the ashes. At first it seems like nothing of interest, until you see a message carved into the inside. You found a bark strip, it must mean something. <laughs> and we can sell it for 10 gold. A sturdy strip of bark, on it is written, Come to Cinderroot. Cinderroot, okay, notify the group. So, it's some kind of message from this Sanderwood guy. Seems that way. Which way to Cinderroot? And Cinderroot is a hushed clearing south of the Glade of Lu. Grounds well travelled by saps, knowledgeable in the rites. Oh, are we going to have like some Ent sort of creatures to talk to? Add to our roster? It is due west. Perhaps we can set forth early tomorrow, when the woods are still. Sounds good. Everyone, rest up. Big day coming up. Big day indeed. Indeed. <laughs> I don't know why I decided to not say the D on the end of indeed, but a big day indeed. Now, let's not study in private. Yeah, study in private. I want everyone to get a, a bonus. We still haven't done any foraging. I just can't see what it'd be good for. Just to get items to sell, I guess. But we're finding like talismans from doing our trials and stuff like that. I think we're good. You excuse yourself from the others to go pour over the Book of Rites and its mysteries. Through greater understanding comes the reader's influence. Um, we need hope. We do. Oh, it's already rank one of two. Master the other aspects of... So we done hope last time, did we? So what does presence do? Increases the size of your fellow exile's aura. Sure, let's do presence this time then. You attune yourself to the strange and mystic properties of the Book of Rites, embracing such as possible that which cannot be explained or truly known. Inspiration comes to you in a flash, whether from the books or from within, you cannot tell. Yeah, we got tenacity. Brilliant, so we'll have bigger auras. Cool, I can't wait to see our big auras in the next right. Continue your journey. Right, are we going to go to, um, yeah, Cinderroot? There it is. Easy. So you have a reason to suspect the informant Sandalwood may have come through here. We've got a huge reason. Okay, have we made it? We have. You arrive on the outskirts of Cinderroot, but once again, the informant Sandalwood is nowhere to be found. You sense the hopes of your companions waning as your search through the area yields nothing. Then, something startles the little imp, Tizzo. What's he seen? Tizzo seems to be crying out in surprise. He has spotted something, or someone. <laughs> a tall figure, oh my god, is this sound? Oh, look at that awesome looking thing. A tall figure strides forward from the trees, making a sound like laughter. The imp charges towards him, and leaps right into the figure's arms. They embrace. This must be sandalwood. Is it a bit like sand wood? Is that, that's not a thing, is it? Hail, Tizzo. But you look famished. Here. The tall sap produces something that the imp swallows immediately and with great pleasure. Okay, so the sap are tree-like creatures known for their ingenuity, cleverness and ambition. Having allied with them, the commonwealth achieved in decades what it could not achieve in centuries. Wow. So they're a great, great race. The low minstrel nods his head in affirmation. Everyone, I wish to introduce you to my client, Volfred Sandalwood. This is Sandalwood, that's crazy. He is the Lone Minstrel's client, Hedwin's informant, and leader of the Nightwings. Bloody hell, it's our leader. Uh, nice to meet you, Mr. Volfred Sandalwood, sir. It has been too long, Volfred, sir. Also, we do refer to him as sir. Okay, good to know. Too long indeed, Tarek. I trust your new companions bring some colour to your days. They do, sir. I think that you shall find them worthy of the Nightwings. The sap looks upon the lot of you. You cannot sense his faults. We shall see. 
Then he turns to you. You must be the reader. I'm certain that we all appreciate your efforts here, my boy. Though we shall manage on our own from here on out. What? No, you can't, you big hunk of bark. You can't just dump me here. That's not fair. You're welcome to continue on with us, of course, though you are free to go. I trust you have been adequately compensated for your time. Thanks as well for looking after all my books. You consider what to say to all of this. Volfred intends to relieve you of your duties to the group. Um, you can remain silent. This cannot be happening to have come this far only to be brushed aside by some strange sap. <laughs> Bid everyone farewell. The leader of the Nightwings has returned. You can tell when you are no longer wanted or insist on staying. You've been assured your freedom. You categorically refuse to be cast aside so easily. You have to go for the top option. It's either going to be the first or the third, but remaining silent, I mean, that's what we've done when we met Pamifo and she wasn't happy with that. We've got to stay. You stand your ground, meet in Volfred's steady gaze and assert to him that you do not feel your commitments to and from this group have yet been satisfied. Hold on. Volfred, sir. I'm Hedwin. My companions and I are the ones who answered your call. We followed the signs you left for us. Now we are here, thanks to you and also to this reader. Not just a reader, he he's our friend, my friend. He's not disposable. We made him a promise and our freedoms are now intertwined. Volfred smirks at this. What are you smirking at, you sack? Starting to go off you. You look awesome, but you're not very nice. Freedom's not something to be traded or exchanged, my boy. I'd hope that you have come to grasp this much by now. He breathes a sigh. It seems we've started off on the wrong foot. It's not my wish to sour the occasion, for there's much to do. You have a right you need to get to, do you not? I'll come along, though shall not interfere for it seems you have a kinship with this reader of yours. Now then, Tarek? Hi, Valfred, sir. Come, let's have a chat. Of course, sir. Valfred strides towards the black wagon, which must have belonged to him. You sense many conflicting emotions among your companions. Oh, wow. Valfred Sandwood joined you. He knows much of the rights. It seems like we joined Valfred Sandwood, really. Welcome him, ab him aboard. Well, thanks for sticking up for us then, Hedwin. You said some really nice words. I do count you as a friend, for sure. Look at that beautiful blossom tree. That's lovely. Your wagon cuts through a clearing to arrive at the Glade of Lou, where the stars directed you. Valfred nods his approval, but leaves everyone to their de uh, devices. So we can commence the right. We've got a page revealed, and we can talk to someone. There, oh, it's, it's Valfred. Okay, what is the page? A demon. Emperor Mur. Scarcely could I recognise him when at last I found him. A half-starved animal, horns sprouted from his head, a bestial mirror of his blackened reputation. And I, a man who conquered countries, feared my emperor then in such a way as I had never known. My charge had been to slay this man, but when I discovered him, he was already fighting for his life. The little imp, Haub, proved of little help against the sisters of the Arch, whose entire lives were cul uh, culminating in this instant. I was unable to watch. My heart aches with such pity for the man and for the love I felt for him when I had served him that I sprang to his defence. Cool, so it seems the longer you spend in the downside, you might be susceptible to sprouting them horns. Is that correct? I think that's what I've grasped. Okay, let's talk this out, Volfred. As you approach Volfred Sandalwood, you feel very much aware that you reside within his black wagon rather than he in yours. He studies you in silence for a time, then... Tarek. If you have a moment. Aye, Volfred, sir. What is it? This reader. You deem him worthy, by your estimation? The low minstrel tilts his hat in your direction. If you wish my own estimation, Volfred, sir, then I do. Of course, it is not entirely for me to say, but I have seen this reader integrating with the others well. I believe that his achievements are self-evident in having reached Black Basin. Your instructions were deliberately difficult to follow, yet... He and the others followed them. Indeed. Your words make sense as ever, Tarek. And what does little Tizzo think of him, I wonder? Come on, back us up, Tizzo. Tizzo indicates that, as a matter of fact, he is happy to have you around. Cheers, buddy. I knew you. I knew we could trust you. You're adorable. There you have it, sir. I see. He continues to examine you. High praise isn't off spoke by those two, my boy. Nonetheless, I shall be watching you. Now, pardon us. Tarek and I have matters to discuss. They leave without another word, although you think you notice the lone minstrel look your way over his shoulder. 
and you can never be sure with that guy. But still, I'm humbled that um, we've received the backup of everyone here. I'd like to be, I'd like to see what Joe Drill says or thinks about us. Um, can we buy and think? Oh, hey, you guys. You know, I guess I didn't get the word out about this new franchise which we opened here just now. So, give you a great deal. Just tell your friends, okay? Oh, and hey there, Mr. Sandwood. Good day to you as well, Ron. Oh, he's got new stuff, but we got no money. <laughs> Sorry, you're going to have to get annoyed at us and talk behind our backs to your dad. Well, I guess maybe I should pack it up for the day. Right, now let's see who we're going to be facing in our right. Um, let's do it. Why not? You and your fellow exiles arrived at the sacred site called Glade of Lu, and now look to the stars in the sky to signal the beginning of the next rite. The woods about you bring a sense of tranquility you've not felt in some time, but then you notice one of the trees move. It shuffles towards you and regards you with an exaggerated bow. Well, goodness. By the roots of low Sclorian, it would appear the rumours are correct. The Nightwings have returned. So who's Lou Scorian? Hundred Minds. Third of the eight scribes of the Book of Rites, known as the Wise or the Philosopher. He is said to have fathomed every fault and his wisdom flows through the river of his name. That is quite the reputation. Oh, but where are my manners, hmm? One moment. The sap claws at his mask with his wispy fingers. Whoa, that is a suave looking tree. Wow, it looks a bit like me. Same haircut. Brilliant, I like this guy. Much better. H. Manly Tinderstaff at your service. Perhaps you've heard of me. Is that Tinderstaff? <laughs> I don't have to say that. It's a psychophant who seems certain he will land a position of high standing once he is free. Sycophant, not psychophant, sycophant. That's what that word says. My fellows and myself, you perhaps know us as the chastity. We soon shall stand against you in the rites. For now, I am just whiling away the time, making small talk. So, the Chastity, a triumvirate bent on exploiting the rights to gain status in the Commonwealth, led by the Sap H. Manly, Tinder stuff. Now then, as I have introduced myself, your turns, to whom am I speaking? Then, in your mind's eye, you see Volfred and hear his voice. Manly Tinder stuff is not to be trusted. Reveal neither yourselves to him, nor me. Well? Beneath her mask, Joe the Real stares back at him in silence. You suspect Volfred's message may have reached every member of the group. Why, now, how very rude indeed. Well, fine. Ignore me. But you do so at your peril. Anyhow, once this evening's right commences, any moment now, then I'm afraid ignoring me won't be an option any longer. Oh, and I now do <laughs> and now I do believe the sky is beginning to show. We'll have to chat again some other time. Now come along, come along. Mandy bows again and wanders off into the clearing as the stars begin to burn. Don't trust him at all, Volfred says, but can we trust Volfred? Who knows? I think the only people we can trust are ourselves and Hedwin, Jodril, Ruki, Sir Gilman, and Tizzo. Oh, and Faye. <laughs> so quite a lot of people, really. But not Pamifar, I don't trust her. Once again, the stars align themselves before you, Rita. They sure do. And here now, at the Glade of Liu, I have to say, you've come so very far. Yes, we have, thank you. But there are those, such as your adversaries called the Chastity, who have toiled for this. God, that blossom so lovely. They know that with their freedom comes great opportunity. It could be yours instead. Mm, so I wonder what's going to be Please the thing for these guys. The Do you reckon they can block any throws or anything like that? Or height won't be an advantage? Like, we won't be able to fly because they're so tall? Anyway, I wonder, oh honoured Nightwings, how well you know these woods? Why, these woods would strangle you, and I'm afraid I could do little to stop them even if I tried. You might do better to beware of them. When Joe the Real continues to ignore him, he grows upset. Why are you insolent? Then fine, let us begin the dance indeed. He shoves his mask back on in a huff. And allow me to thank you in advance for helping me to return onto my proper station in the Commonwealth. Wow, so we've pissed off a huge sap. Oh look, they've got a mix wow, of uh, players. Right, well, before we commence this riot, I think there might be a good place to leave it. 
I mean, it could be argued where maybe I should do the right first, but I think I'm going to leave it here. So if you enjoyed this episode of Pyre, please go ahead and leave a like. It helps out a great deal, and I really do appreciate it. If you want to see more, we're going to do this right against that horrible sap and beat him and maybe sh like wipe the smirk off his face. Go ahead and subscribe, and I'll bring that to you. Any comments you want to raise? What do you think of Sandalwood? Do you trust him? Anything at all, leave a comment below, and I'll make sure I'll get back to you. All right? See you.